Right, health, author health authorities that is here in the country have said the number of severely ill COVID-19 patients will play a pivotal role in our gradual transition to a new normal given the recent rise. But that is, given the recent rise in these numbers, uh, we are going to have to have Shin Yeun here in the studio with me to tell me about this rise in the severely ill COVID-19 patients. Right, Yeun? Yes, hello, Sunny. Right now, I hear our step into phase two of our exit strategy from the pandemic remains rather uncertain. Tell us more. Right. On Thursday, KDCA Chief Chung eun Gyeong cautioned that if the number keeps rising, the country could face difficulties in moving on to the second phase of our gradual return to normal scheme, which was set for December. Earlier this month, Korea began the process of gradually easing restrictions in three phases. Phase one kicked off last week with the relaxing of social gathering caps and business restrictions. The gradual easing steps are set to be rolled out in six-week intervals, including a two-week evaluation period. Assuming everything goes as planned, authorities have pinned December 13th as the first day of phase two, where measures would be further eased. But on this Friday, just a day after Chung's remarks, the number of patients in critical condition rose to 475, another all-time high. We've been seeing record high tallies for three consecutive days, which explain why authorities remain on high alert. Right. Yeon, on a bright note now, do tell us a bit about the recent vote of support for Korea's antibody treatment over in Europe. Right, so we are seeing some bright news here. Korean drug maker Celtrion has received the green light from the European Medicines Agency for its antibody therapy called Recurona. Europe's drug regulators are recommending the treatment for adults who do not require extra oxygen support, yet are still at high risk of a severe illness. It's now awaiting approval from the European Commission for marketing authorization. Red Corona has been shown to lower the rate of hospitalizations and deaths. It's a monoclonal antibody that attaches itself to the virus and mimics natural human antibodies to fight infections. Right. Meanwhile, I hear Moderna's chief medical officer has spoken about the efficacy of the company's vaccine against breakthrough infections, Yen. That's definitely right. Moderna said its COVID-19 vaccine was actually linked to fewer breakthrough infections compared to Pfizer. And Moderna CMO touted data from the CDC that showed 86 breakthrough cases per 100,000 for Moderna recipients and 135 breakthrough cases from Pfizer recipients. The CMO said the overall benefits of a Moderna shot outweighed the risk of rare heart inflammation that has been reported in a small number of young Moderna recipients. Data from France on males aged 12 to 29 also showed there were 13.3 cases of myocarditis per 100,000 Moderna recipients, whereas only 2.7 among Pfizer recipients. The number of myocarditis cases found among Moderna recipients was nearly five times more than what had been found from those who actually received the Pfizer shots. But the CMO defended use of the vaccine, saying that unvaccinated people are at an 11-fold increased risk of dying, whereas the reported heart conditions were generally mild. The CMO also said the company hasn't seen any cases of myocarditis, heart inflammation among those who received their booster shots, which have actually taken up half of Moderna's total distributed dosages of its primary series of shots. 